she becomes silent. Observe your body and make all the adjustments that help bring you into your best alignment. And become present, being aware that you are here. There's nowhere else. There's nowhere where the mind needs to be other than right here. And then to help the mind we can use a proliferate of the yoga tools and one of them is of course to follow the breath with the attention of the mind and the second is an affirmation that flows with the breath so you can choose your affirmation. And it can always go something like this. As I inhale, I inhale love. As I exhale, I exhale peace. And then of course you adapt this for you. As I inhale, I inhale love. And as I exhale, I exhale peace. So the idea is to not only focus your mind, but at the same time, change <clears throat> your vibration, change how you're currently feeling. Elevate yourself. Breathe in, and there's your quality of what you breathe in. And exhale, breathe out, and what is that quality? And now, release that practice and bring your hands up to your heart. <clears throat> and chant with me. Let's repeat three ohms. It'll be just you and if you're with someone and my voice. So no one will hear you but you. Bring your legs down in front of you and pump your thighs. And then Bhadakonasana. Good. And as
as your inner thighs are releasing, rub the bottoms of your feet. Just in case you haven't given them any attention lately. Spread your toes. Work the toes over. You know, there's a lot of stuff between, you know, in, not the toes, but the toe mounds is where those uh, three little muscles are. It, sometimes it's just two, but a lot of times it's three. A lot of connective tissue, so it's nice to poke around on the toe mound between those bones. So we give that a nice deep massage. Okay, and then we'll stretch the legs out, cross the shins and roll over into Adho Mukha Shranasana, down facing down. Oh yes, that feels much needed. Relax the neck. <clears throat> Let the body bones rise so that your spine can elongate. Then lift your head, inhale, and on the exhale, we'll come up to the front of the mat for four again. Uttanasana. <laughs> hmm. And then bend your knees and inhale, up you come. And then hands to the heart. When we go back down into down facing dog, we're going to go into up dog and down dog multiple times. You can choose a variation of, of something that works better for you if that's difficult. So you have the child's pose into modified cobra with elbow straight, and you have cat and calf. Inhale, reach up. This part I'm sure we all have. Bend your knees as you come down, exhale, but then straighten the legs. The spine nice and long in the Ardha Uttanasana, the half forward bend. And then on the exhale, we'll plant our hands down on the floor and walk our feet back. Let's shoot for 12. Let's make it a nice, fun new number. 12 up dogs and down dogs are the variation that you're going to do. Inhale, one, back. And I'll let you count. You don't want to hear you know, <laughs> me count. The, that gets so annoying sometimes, doesn't it? Ah. Now, according to my count, though, because I'm doing it in my head, that's just number six. So we could be halfway done. And here's number 10 right here, 10. No, I could be wrong. I always reserve the right to be wrong. <laughs> and then we're done. And so we'll step that right foot forward to the front of the mat. And stay up in a high lunge for a moment. And then do this four actions. We've heard, you've heard these before. They try to make it feel like you're doing everything's just sort of opening up and moving in opposite directions. So what happens is this hip right here, the, the right hip, it drops down, it goes down. In contrast to that, the left thigh, it goes up, down, up. And then the right knee moves forward and the left heel moves back. So you've got four things moving in four different directions. Mm. And let's take a deep breath and return to the office and dog on your exhale. Inhale, lift the head, and exhale, left foot forward. And once again, let's create the four things. So now it'll be left hip down, with the right thigh up. And then the left knee, that away. And the right heel, back that way. And return to down facing off. Oh. 
Now lift the head, inhale, and exhale, and come up to the front of the mat for Uttanasana. And then inhale all the way up. Hands to your heart. <clears throat> now this next practice is a little bit dynamic and it's not meant to discourage anyone from practice. It's like you don't go, oh no, I can't do that and you leave the room. See, I will show you what you can do if you have difficulty with the jumping back and forth of your legs in the lunge. And then we'll also, for those of us who can do a little bit more dynamic practice, we'll get our heart rates up. But we have to respect what we can and cannot do, right? So we need our hands elevated on blocks. And the idea is to be in a lunge with your hands flat. So if you don't have blocks, we tend to be up on our fingertips in this position. But we're jumping possibly. So the hands need to be able to bear the weight of the body. So they need to be flat. Excuse me, and then we're in a lunge. Now let's do it without worrying about anything too dynamic yet. It's simple, take a deep breath, inhale, and on the exhale, switch the legs. <clears throat> you see? So if we did that a little fast, then it's going to cause us to have to uh, breathe a little bit heavier and get our heart rate up. So let's try it. Inhale, exhale. Now, each time you step your feet back apart, make sure you've got enough distance so you can feel the back leg, front groin, receiving the joy and benefit. Inhale with me. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. You see, that went pretty well, didn't it? And you could even come down and rest for a moment if you wanted to. You could shake out your hands. There's all kinds of things you can do to make it fit for you. But now we're going to do a fast change of twice on the exhale. So that means you'll end up with the right leg forward again. Let's give that a shot. Now remember, if you have trouble with this, any bit of trouble, go back and just do it once on the exhale. So let's give it a shot. Let's give the automatic all American high school try. Inhale. Here we go. Exhale. One change, two change. Done. Inhale again. Exhale, change, change. You see? Not too bad. Let's do it one more time. Inhale, exhale, change, change. Oh, but the right leg is getting tired of being forward. So in a big jump hop, we're going to switch sides. Inhale, exhale, boom. Oh, that went well, didn't it? <laughs> uh, I don't want to see your faces. Okay, so... Let's do it now with the left leg forward. We'll just do it once. Inhale with me. Exhale. Boom. Boom. Okay. Now, we, we have to bump it up a little bit. So to bump it up a little bit means that now on the exhale, we're going to try to switch it three times. Let's see what happens. I know you're thinking, we're going to put it in there with the right leg forward again. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Inhale with me. Exhale, change, change, change. Uh oh, if you run on the exhale before you get to three, you need to stop. You can't keep moving while you're not there, where there's no breath flowing. I think we've got it. We can do this one more time, don't you? Uh, or just do once. Inhale, exhale, change, change, change. Good. And that's on the next breath, step forward and forward again. Hmm. That should warm the legs up nicely. Okay, so then that means inhale, come up and get your belt. Because we're going to stretch the old hamstring. That's right. Let's get it done. I didn't think all that work now, we're going to lie around? Well, not long. So let's take the right leg up. Get it positioned so you have a good stretch. And it's warmed up now. So it's going to be very cooperative thinking to itself, I'm ready for you. And we don't want to stretch the inner fibers more than the outer or vice versa. So make sure that the, you're not rotated to uh, externally or to internally, that you feel right in the back of your leg, that big belly. You're stretching right down the middle. Now in your next breath, 
We'll use the exhale to switch sides. Take the right leg down, lift the left leg up, and here we go. Same thing. We want to pay attention to make sure that we don't, because you know the correction is to externally rotate the thigh bone. But if we hear that for 30 years, we may end up over external rotating it. And of course, the common position is internal rotation. So we have to find that balance. Make sure you're right down the middle of the back of that left leg. We don't want to create an imbalance. We don't want to use yoga to promote imbalance. Now, sometimes we need a little technique that will help us speed things up a little bit because the hamstrings really want to be open tonight. So let's use the contract relax technique. Contract relax means that you're going to contract the hamstring a few times to make it really work hard and then relax it so that then it will stretch easier. We, it's, it's really for fatiguing the muscle fibers so they let go. They just say, I give up. So the left leg, when we stretch down the floor and the right leg is in its maximum position. Now, when we say contract the hamstring, that's going against the stretch, don't feel like you have to do it like at 100%. That's too much and that may cause some strain. So think of that maybe 50, 60%. So on your next exhale, try to lower the leg, but don't let it go down to the floor. You're holding the belt and the belt is saying, I'm the foot is the leg that's trying to say, I'm done. I'm trying to get back to the floor and you won't let it. And then on the inhale, relax. And then do it again. So if you're, as you're pressing against the belt, it may be better to wrap the belt around your hands so your fingers don't sit tight because your hands do have to work. And a third time, on the exhale, press the heel down towards the floor of the right leg like you're trying to get it to go to the floor. That's contracting the hamstring. And then when you release, the hamstring relaxes. Now let's see what happens when we try to deepen the stretch. So you squeeze your right thigh muscle a lot. Remember, that's re that creates reciprocal inhibition. Inhale deeply. And on the exhale, see if the leg will move a little closer to you. So you have a new place. Now don't go overboard. Just go to that new edge. And let's try to contract, relax again. On the exhale, press the heel down. On the inhale, relax. On the exhale, try to get the heel to come down to the floor. Inhale, relax. And one more time, try to get the heel down. It's trying to move back down to the floor to be with the left leg, but you won't let it. And then inhale, relax. And then we'll do the, the reciprocal inhibition again. So squeeze the right thigh muscle, press up into the heel on a deep inhalation, and exhale, see if you have a new place and the leg does move a little bit. A degree or two is fine, it's perfect. And now let's do it one more time, inhale, and on the exhale, try to get that leg down to the floor. Inhale, release. Exhale, press down to the floor. Inhale, release. And exhale, press down to the floor. Inhale, release. Squeeze the right thigh, inhale. And on the exhale, see if the leg will move a little bit more. And it comes a degree. So again, a degree or two is perfect. It's like just enough. And then you hold it for a moment. You don't let it go back down to the floor too quickly because you want to store your new range of motion in memory. And then let go. And it's amazing too when you let go of that it gets all that blood rush in there and the back of that right leg feels incredibly different. We have to do the other side. <laughs> So get, it, get ready, get in your starting position. Again, so just to review, what we'll be doing is trying to contract the hamstring that would take the leg down to the floor, but because we're holding the belt, we won't let the, 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 the leg go. Come to your maximum stretch. Not max like the, the ripping away from the bone, miserable stretch, but the one that you find, you notice the sensation of stretch, but you're very comfortable. That's where you want to be. On the exhale, try to lower the leg, but the leg won't go. Inhale, release. Exhale, try to get the leg to the floor, but the, it can't go. Inhale, release. 
and exhale, try to press against the belt, not maximum force, not a maximum, that'll create too much tension. Inhale, release. Now squeeze the left thigh muscle and inhale, and on the exhale, see if you can bring that leg a little bit more towards you. There you go, good. Let's try again. Inhale, and on the exhale, let's try to get that leg down to the floor. Inhale, release. Exhale, press, 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 press. Inhale, release. Exhale, try again, try again, try again. Inhale, release. And let's do it again. Now this time, we contract the muscle. Inhale deeply, and then use the exhale to see if the leg will move a little bit farther towards you. It's very fascinating, isn't it? Because you can move it a little bit and it not feel like it's so tight. Inhale, and on the exhale, try to get the leg down to the floor. Release. Exhale, try to get the leg down to the floor. Release. And exhale, try to get that leg down to the floor. Inhale, release. Squeeze the left thigh muscle, inhale, and exhale, see if you can move that leg just a little bit more towards your face. So you have a new back of your right leg and release to enjoy it. Okay. I always think it's nice to do it. One of our favorite standing poses about right now, just to get off the floor and get back moving again. So let's do Parj, Parjma Konasana. That's a nice because it'll really be nice and opening in the side of the body. And some of us may have had to do some things today uh, around the house or at our jobs. And this will help let go of some of that gook. Let me collect the standing mountain posture. I've got my blocks set up. So I'll give you a moment to get yours. <clears throat> and then on the inhalation, step your feet wide apart. Turn your left foot in and your right leg out. Inhale with me and exhale, bend the right knee and then put your right hand down on the floor of the block. Take your left arm over your head. There. We try to create that wonderful long line in the left side of your body, starting with the outer left heel in the floor. Now this outer left leg, the lower leg. There have, there's some muscles there that don't get stretched enough. So as you roll towards the heel, the outer heel, that will help that. Now be strong in your legs. And inhale up you come and turn forward. Other side. Inhale. Exhale. Down you go. Same thing on this other side. Try to get that outer right heel down to the earth and open the whole side of the body, which includes those outer, those, the lower outer left leg, right leg. And then inhale up your gum. Turn your feet forward, bend your knees, inhale, and exhale, step your feet together, and let your arms rest by your side. Good, okay. Now, I know you're thinking, we've already done some lunges, but I want to do some more and spend a little time in them so we can really focus on the psoas, major muscle. So let's get our two blocks back at the front of the mat, side by side, and this time in the high level, and the blanket down that will cushion our knee. So we start here with the right foot forward and the left knee back. And by being up a little bit, it's going to give us a more stretch. Now we're going to do a lot of variations. So this will be vari variation number one. One of the things that I want us to pay attention to is number three things. Number one, that the knee is over the ankle. You know, that's the old story for that book. Number two, the left knee has scooted back as far as it will go without taking the right knee back. And then number three, move the left hip, right hip, the, the one that's away from the camera, forward. Move it forward because when you take the left leg back, 
the psoas is going to pull the hip back with it. And we counter that by moving the left hip, rotate it forward. Now release and take the right leg back and move the left foot forward. So check my alignment of my left knee over the ankle. My right knee, I scoot it back as far as possible. Then I put my mind in this right hip and move it forward because it wants to linger back. It wants to go back with the hip flexor where it inserts on the inner thigh. And then release. Now when you release, if you do need to, like if you feel, oh, that pulled on my low back a little bit, which the psoas can do, then you can do a child's pose. Good. Now we take this block and we put it here like this. And this block can stay here. It can sort of be like a little helper block in case you need to put your hand on. Both of your hands are going to go on your thigh at this time. This is for your right foot. But you might be a little bit wobbly. It's just everyone's a little different. So you put your right foot up on the block. Knee over ankle still, you can see that clearly. Left knee back, okay? So right now I've got my left hand on the block, which you can't, this behind my eyes, so you can't see, but that's to help me get steady. But now I bring both of my hands up onto my thigh. I'm still moving the left hip forward. So the left hip moves forward, like it's rotating towards the right inner knee. Of course, we're going to lift the pit of the abdomen. We have to, but I also press my hands down to my thigh. This is a little tricky with balance. So if you do feel really wobbly, use your, maybe you have extra blocks. Maybe you can put a chair in front of you. There's uh, ways to help you so they don't uh, flip out. Now, really, so I'm going to put my left hand down to catch this block. Let's shift my weight a little bit over to the left and take the right knee back. And then I can flip the blocks like this. The right block is up, the left block is down. And the left foot comes onto that block. So now do my little check, knee over ankle, right hip back. I spin the right hip towards the left and the knee. And then if I feel steady, I put my hands on the thigh and press down. Mm. I think um, you can probably all feel this. I hope so. <laughs> but in a positive way, not painful. Release <laughs> and catch. Now we go back and we'll, the, the good news is, as you see me going, are we going to do that again? I see him setting those blocks up. Yes, we are going to do it again. Mm -hmm. And the good news is, uh, there's two pieces of good news. Number one, you could repeat what you just did and receive benefit. Or number three, we're going to lift the back leg like knee. So that'll bring a little bit more uh, story <laughs> into the hip. So we first have our balance and we're stable. Then we tuck these toes. I'm going to keep my left hand on this block until, and even lean forward a little bit until the left knee is up. Because sometimes you have to take weight away from that back leg to get it to lift. And then you can bring your upper torso back over the pelvis. And then put your hands on the thigh. If you are wobbly and cannot balance, remember, you can place a block in, blocks in, more blocks in front of you. You can put a chair in front of you. You can even do this with your hands on the wall. That back leg in a thigh needs to lift. It needs to lift. It needs to lift. And the bit of the abdomen goes with it. It sucks all the way up into your nostrils. And release. Oh yeah, I think we got in there that time. It's such a little tricky thing to get into. So let's switch sides. Oh, the left leg really has a fun little challenge of being moved forward once you've had that deep of a stretch. Okay, now remember, the secret to getting the back leg knee up is to shift the weight off of the back knee. 
then lift it up. But do make sure you've got enough distance between the right foot and the left foot that you can feel this. And then hands on the thigh. So right hip is moving forward, hands are pressing down, pit of the abdomen is lifted. And release. Good. And then let's do a child's pose. That'll feel nice and refreshing to the lumbar spine. And then up you come. So now we're going to take our mats over to the yoga wall or, or a wall anywhere in your house. Any wall in my home is a yoga wall, it's all, for, all fair game. I don't have a wall close by that would make a good demonstration wall, so I'm just going to use the hutch right there as my wall. And you should be able to see me okay. And then uh, you all can go anywhere that you have a good wall space. And if you cannot see the, the uh, computer anymore, you can certainly listen. The practice that we're doing is the warrior uh, one at the wall. Most of you that practice with me regularly have done it before, so you know what to do. I'm gonna go I think if I'm here, you'll see me. Hmm, maybe I should be more here. Because I want to see, yeah, so you can see my hands. And the mat will come here. And I'm going to encourage us to pin the block on the wall with your knee. However, if you struggle tonight and the block keeps falling, if you have a heavy block and it keeps falling, that isn't going to really serve your toes well. So you can just leave it out and just estimate the space. One of the reasons why I like holding the block is it gives me feedback and lets me know where my right knee should be as I'm trying to take the left leg back as much as possible. But even as I take the left leg back, I still have to pay attention to how far is that hip going to travel back with that leg? Because I don't want the left hip to start going out to the left. It has to still face forward. So number one, do I want my toes up the wall or is that too much? So um, I do have, this hutch will allow me, you can't really see with those blankets there, but it will allow me to put my toes, see? They've been backwards right there. Then I can put my block right there and pin that right, let's move right this one out on the little latches. Perfect, that's my spot. Then I'm gonna hop that left leg back and hop that left leg back. But check, is the left hip still facing forward or is it just a, a few degrees that I can then rotate Hands are here, supporting me on the wall as I wiggle it back a little bit more. Yep, the left hip is still forward. Wiggle back, wiggle back, wiggle back. Okay, we're ready. I'm gonna turn that heel in just a little bit and press that heel to the floor. I want so far back that hopefully we feel the back of the left calf opening. We, it needs to open. And then we have the left front hip, it's opening. We have the left hip moving towards the right in the knee like we did in the lunges. And if we're steady and stable, we can take the arms away from the wall, out to the side, turn the palms up, and then reach out. So we're doing our Virabhadrasana one right here at the wall. But getting all the little pieces set up before we take the pose that we sometimes don't get when we're in the middle of the room. And sometimes when we're holding it for a while, and you can reach for that block and step your left foot forward, when we're holding it in the room, we actually start coming out of the pose. So the wall will help us, and the block will help us stay in the pose. So now the toes go up the wall on this side, left toes, right leg will hop back, hop back, hop back. All you have to do is drop this so but a couple of times and you'll make sure it doesn't happen again. <laughs> okay, my right leg is pretty far. I'm gonna take it back a little bit more. Uh, now I feel like I'm really sinking down into the pose. That's a, the, the bottom part of Virabhadrasana 1 should feel like it's descending downward. But the upper part, the upper body feels like it's ascending. Okay, so now back leg thigh, powerful. Heel into the earth. 
especially the outer heel, like we did in side angle pose. And then lift the pit of the abdomen. And if you feel stable, arms out to the side, palms up, reach those arms by your ears. And lower the arms, catch the wall, catch the block, step your right foot forward, step your left foot back. Good. Now, I bet that you thought, as we were done with the lunges, no, 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 absolutely not. That was just a break from being on the floor doing lunges to actually prepare us for more lunges. <laughs> so this one, you could stay at the wall. You've done this with me if you've been to the studio before. You stay at the, I'm going to actually show you how to do it in the middle of the room in a chair. But you could, this is so that you get into the quadricep. You put a blanket down all the way to the wall. You have your blocks in front of you like this. You kneel down, face away from the wall. And then you lean onto the block so it's easy to adjust your legs. The, I'm going to put the left shin up the wall, you see, and then the right foot will just hop for a second. Um, you can see the position of the right leg. I've got to get my foot up here with these blocks. So I lean forward and just half the right foot forward. Now, the reason why I'm going to do it a different way is because not all of us may have a little wall that we can stick our shin up. And by the way, if you're following your thigh muscle, screw away. You don't have to be all the way up there. That's pretty tight. But when you do get in the posture, be sure to drop that hip forward because that's what's going to give you a hip flexor stretch in more than just the um, psoas and iliac. You should also get the rectus femoris. So here is the way I'll do it. I have a chair and I'm just going to put my foot on the chair. So I think I'll, let me do it this way because I'll do my left leg first. So my blanket for my knees, my chair for my foot, the blocks forward. So I put the foot like that on the chair seat, you see, and the knee is on the floor. And then I lean onto the blocks and easily pop the right foot forward. And then I begin to do the work. I'm going to scooch my foot for you. See how the, the um, foot is a little forward of my knee? That's so I can now lunge forward and get the knee over the ankle. So now I have the front thigh stretch, combo hip flexor stretch. Yeah. This will help you sleep at night. This will take all your worries away. <laughs> oh. Isn't it? I like this better than Ekapada Sutta Virasana. That pose is challenging, isn't it? Now, I do want, before we do the other side, just in case neither of these variations work for you, the whole thing can be done without any prop. You simply take your lunge like that and then just bend the back leg. So no props at all. Now you have to use your extensor muscles in the back of the leg, but you're still, we do that a lot. We contract the front muscles to release the, we contract one side of the body to release the other side. And so that's what you would be doing. So it, it's not as effective, it's not as stretchy, but it works. So now I'm going to do the other side. Oh, and by the way, if you're at your home and you have a sofa, your foot would love a nice soft sofa to rest up on. So just near the front of your sofa. Okay, so I'll do the right leg first. So just put my foot on the chair seat, lean forward, pop that left leg forward. Mm. And we are off and running. Once again, scoot the foot forward though, because I'm not quite there yet. Then lunge. And we're ready. Oh, I've got it. The right front thigh and the right hip flexor groin. I do hope <clears throat> that you're all okay in whatever variation that you have chosen. 
it's hard. You know, I can't check up on you. So I'm just going to trust that no one has ripped the uh, hip flexor away from the bone. Okay, we're going to release. It'll be very helpful once again to do a child's pose just because of the intense stretch that we're putting on the psoas uh, with the uh, lumbar spine involved. A couple of deep breaths in that area of the low back. Okay. So now what we do is see if we can, um, you know, we can't always get everything so loose that we just slide right on the floor and up to the Hanumasana pose. But we can certainly see how far we can go. So I have one blanket for kneeling and we'll put, we'll let the, this will be your left leg, so mirror means. So your left leg, that will stay on that blanket. So it needs to be comfortable. And then the right heel is going to slide out on this blanket. Now let's see. I'm going, I can see my camera needs to be tilted down, so excuse me for a moment. So you'll see my blanket just slide right on out there as we try to move it as to, as to however far we can go. So this will be your right leg. Now pay attention. You want to stay on this knee. And this hit right over here, don't let this leg roll out of here. Remember, we're going right down the middle of the hamstring. And right in the front, you have secondary hip flexors. So right, so you've learned that in your anatomy classes. This, we only want to touch the primary hip flexor. I put blocks in front of me. I can lean on them like this and just begin to let that right leg. See, here it comes, coming towards the camera. So if I can walk out. And there you go. Now, the first one, it's okay to so we're going to bring the torso back up like we do in Warrior One. But in the first one, we just let everything lean forward, unless you're very open your hands across to the floor. So you just stop and pause and breathe. Let the muscles have a chance to accommodate. The one nice thing about having the, you know, the, the camera in front of you, you can see if you crisscross your legs, you can see that's a nene. I need my right leg to come straight out of the hip and the left leg to go back straight out of the hip. And now use your breath and pull with the pit of the other one to pull that leg back and switch sides. Now the next thing when we do this side is you're sliding out. So you can start back and walk your blocks forward, hop, hop. You get to the place where you, oh, that's it. You know, everything in combination. You feel the back of the right leg. You feel the front of the left hip. No, I'm sorry, front of the right hip and the back of the left leg. There you go, because you're mirroring me. You're right with me. You want to move the, the back leg hip forward, just like you did in the lunges, just like you did in the words, because the tendency is to go crooked. That's okay if you're a cheerleader, but not if you're a yogi. And you can feel. Now, what we're going to do is notice how much space there is between the floor and the body. Because what we need to do next is fill that space in. And then one of the reasons why we're putting weight on our arms is because we can't let go and just hang by the hamstring tendons in the pose. I can't just lift up and just sag. And a lot of people will do that, unfortunately. So bring that leg back and um, have more than what you need around you. So let's first say, and you're just going to put it under the front leg here. So let's just say, I know it's going to probably be about, I could, I could use the block in this position. I think, I think it was up a little higher than that. So maybe, but just a little bit. So maybe an extra blanket, just handy. It doesn't have to um, go under there, but you just have it handy and it's good. it can be folded. So number one is get the left leg in place, get the right leg in place, start sliding out. Walk your legs out, all is well. You're going, you're headed up, and suddenly you realize, okay, let me slide this under that. Oh, that is, must have been made for me, because there I am. And now I can start bringing myself back. I still have my blocks handy to put weight on, but I'm more um, upright. 
I can start coming back. And just sit there for a moment once you figure out how much you need under you. Uh, don't let the back leg knee turn out either. Mine's pointing to real bad, so I'm going to uh, adjust. Yeah, there it is. Now it's, it gets intense, and there's a, a conversation sometimes going on in the mind. I want out of here. I want to go to the restroom. I will think I'll just, if I click myself out of the Zoom, will he notice? <laughs> Yeah, I will. <laughs> oh my goodness, we have to challenge ourselves sometimes, right? Okay, now you got your prop on this side, so now let's get the prop on the other side. Pull that leg back. It's it's not always the same, but I'm going to start with my block. I've got another blanket, uh, a blanket here handy in case. So I'm on my right knee. I slide out. I have my block ready. And this is my looser side, so usually I can go a little bit lower on this hamstring, but that's all right. This feels perfect. So you really only need that. You can sit on, on a bolster. It could be under the back of your left leg in the front of your right leg, but you really only need to support the sitting bone on the front leg. And by the way, if it took you four or five blocks to sit on, it's fine. And it's just a stretch in the front leg and the back leg. It's not really trying to get all the way into the split. It's nice to, it kind of is like scratching something deep and itchy. It's like the, the, the muscles really agree. We need to do this. Okay, and then we come back. Now, uh, I, we, we, yeah, we're going to do it again. And this time, if you thought, because this is going to be very important, we're going to take the arms up like warrior one. So it's going to be more like the final pose with the arms of Hanumanasana is celebrating his victory. So if this was not enough for you to put the weight down on it, this is your chance to say, you know what? I just need that one little blanket corner on that block, and then I know I'll be comfortable. And of course, you can, it's just a variation, so you can always just keep your hands on your blocks. All right, here we go. Sliding out. My block is right there to meet me. Now, first I check, is the block in the right place? Done. Have I everything accommodated? Nothing feels overstretched. Lift the pit of the abdomen. Are my shoulders over my hips? Is the right, this is your back leg here. This will be your um, left side, your left hip forward so that the hip points match up. And if everything's fine, take your arms out to the side and reach them overhead. We'll take about three breaths. That'll be nice. Mmm, good. And then release. And then you have to suck the bit of the other and then pull the hips back. Good. And we'll switch sides. So let's do all the check. Oh, and by the way, you want this muscle contracted because the hamstring should really relax. That way it won't be at risk for injury. Right hip forward. Mm -hmm. That helps protect. By the way, by moving this hip forward, it helps protect the right SI joint. Because if you let yourself twist back, the torso twists forward, that's when you put the strain on the SI. Okay, now, have you got enough prop under here that you can now let go and bring your shoulders over your hips? If so, Arms up to the side, turn the palms up, reach the arms by your ears. Mm. Mm. Mm, I feel so good. I almost don't want to stop after three breaths. But I know we gotta be equal. Okay, suck the pit of the abdomen in and pull your hips back. Mm, a big exhale. Good. And then your back will want to be. Relaxed and stretched out, so we'll come into child's pose. Okay, and then press up now. Just recline on your back for a little bit with your feet together and knees apart. So it's an unsupported 
Suttavara Kunasana. It will be restful for your body after that intense practice. It will help soften the abdomen and the inner groins. So you just lie flat, unless you absolutely have to have some sort of elevation. And you don't need support for the inner thighs because you won't be here long. Just receive the floor. Just receive the earth and just receive the assistance of gravity. And now let's bring our legs together. And if you need to get up and reorganize yourself for Shavasana, you can. You just roll to your side and start getting your props together. Otherwise, you can just stretch out where you are and relax. And I'll bring you out of Shavasana in just a few moments. And I appreciate you working so hard with me this evening. It's a challenging post, but it's so worth it. Tomorrow, many of you will probably know which I feel still a little freer. When you feel comfortable, scan the body from the top. Go all the way down to your toes. And don't forget to venture up with your arms. Check the hands and the fingers and make sure they're relaxed. As a matter of fact, do check and make sure that you're on the backs of your palms, right in the center of the hands. Not the backs of the palms, backs of the hands. Uh, sometimes we, when we lie down, we're more towards the little side finger. Uh, because of the tightness in our internal rotator. So it's nice to sort of counter that and roll the arms out and have your palms face up.
You take a slow deep breath into your beautiful body. And then exhale. Bend your knees, please. And then let your legs just enjoy rocking side to side. Massaging the back. And then roll to your right side. And then we'll come up and sit comfortably. The light within my heart sees and honors the light within your heart. Namaste.